Russia. It looks like the Democratic debates did shuffle the field a little bit, according to a new poll by the Morning Consult. Former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders remain the front runners. However, there are some new candidates making their way up the ladder. Senator Kamala Harris, in particular, now tied with Senator Elizabeth Warren for third place among Democratic primary voters. Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Senator Cory Booker also made some strides. But it wasn't just Democrats watching the presidential debates last week. Republicans had a keen eye on how the policy discussions and the candidates claimed who they could beat best Donald Trump. One candidate in particular is getting a lot of donations from the GOP. Last week, Republican strategist Jeff Rowe called for members of his party to donate to Marianne Williamson, <laughs> saying one debate performance is not enough. I agree. I Joining us her. now to discuss the takeaways for the debate for Republicans is Michael Steele, previously uh, served as chair of the RNC. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Strike that, Chuck. Yeah, what do you think? Are, should Republicans be donating to Marianne Williamson? Yeah. Yeah, whoever you want to give yeah, to. Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. That's a little bit wild. What are your top line takeaways? Takeaways from this debate. We have a little bit of the polling. Yeah. Results. Well, yeah. the polling doesn't surprise yeah. me. I okay. think that uh, Biden uh, did himself uh, no good, as they say, mm -hmm. uh, in the neighborhood. He um, came in there flat-footed, ill-prepared, um, made some assumptions about his opponent, opponents. Um, and even though they told him in advance what they were going to do, I mean, just hours before the debate, you had uh, Eric Swalwell, a Californian congressman, throw you know a bromide across his uh, bow and said, you know, I'm coming after you, pretty much. Uh, and it still, it didn't seem to you know awaken uh, those instincts inside of Biden to go out there and be a little bit more aggressive and, and protect himself. So these poll numbers, I think, reflect that. What I think was beneath the poll numbers that's equally important is how Kamala fares uh, in light of that exchange mm -hmm. with Biden. Top line, it looks like, oh, yeah, she got a bump of six points. Yeah. Beneath the surface, now, anecdotal, but there are there's uh, polling that's coming out to support this view. In the black community, it hurt her. Yeah. Um, this was not... Uh, something that I think she's going to walk away from with a lot of black support. Why do you I, think explain that why. Well, yeah. I think largely yeah. because now it may largely be um, age related, older African Americans. And I talked to some folks, about 10 folks all together, between California, Florida, and New York, and uh, after that. And the response uh, for those who were 45 and over was she done him wrong, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, was too aggressive, too much. Um, My old white dad said the same thing, and by just, the way. <laughs> yeah, and so you had uh, older African Americans um, saying this, particularly women, which I thought was very interesting. Hmm. Um, so younger ones were sort of mixed. Um, they kind of liked the aggressiveness. Yeah. But um, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this settles down. Look, here's my deal. Why are we talking about busing <laughs> in 2019? Well, here's, here's, I mean, we went for we have gone from in a matter of four or five days yeah. from uh, Joe Biden saying, "Hey, you know, as an example of working across the aisle, I had to work with some pretty crazy, nasty segregationists, mm. but we got some things done, right?" To what's your position on busing? And 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 so that issue is complicated in a space where people self segregate. People don't want to live. If you don't believe me, go to church on Sunday. Uh -huh. And who's sitting next to you? So look at your neighborhood. When you go shopping, who's in that, who's in that grocery store? Uh -huh. So this is a little bit more complicated than of, you know, the story of a five-year-old girl having to be the first one. Right. Same Although view I, I've I heard say... from a lot of, you know, congressional black caucus members are saying the same thing. Many of them are defending Joe Biden. We have a couple endorsements to Kamala Harris, but it's certainly not the majority view. Right. I think the real question is, is about the theory of change within the Democratic Party. Where do you see that going into these results. You know, you have Joe Biden or you have Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and really being more of a consensus the system is fine and needs to be changed whereas Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren want fundamental changes to the system itself. Uh, I've been in that room, yeah. a little thing called Tea Party. Right. Uh, so I know that space very well. You have to manage that relationship within the party, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in a presidential cycle. Now, I had the benefit of being outside of a presidential cycle. So we could we could massage it a little bit more differently. We didn't have the weight of, you know, three or four people above us sort of pressing down on us as presidential candidates. So it's a little bit different. but. 
the Democratic Party has to decide what, where, what, is, what it wants to be and where it is relative to where the country is. Uh, my good friend here, she yeah, and I yeah. had some fun on my podcast recently going back and forth. And I love the ideological debate. It's an important debate to have. But at the end of the day, you've got to reconcile that with where the country is. And I do not think the country is going to be down, as polls have shown. Uh, yes, I like the idea of Medicare for all. Until you say that, well, you may, you may right not get insurance. to keep a lot of right. the insurance that you have. So there, the, all of that has got to get worked out and vetted through in this process. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, right now, the Democrats are trailing in that regard. Um, their, their issues are not necessarily a leading indicator relative to Trump. In other words, we can beat Trump with this. Mm -hmm. The health care issue is a good example. In 2018, that was sort of the sleeper issue. Um, but it wasn't around this idea of taking away my health insurance, uh, as I currently have it, if, you know, my employer's health insurance, or things like that. It was around the broad idea of fixing Obamacare, which I find ironic mm. that the Democrats gave us Obamacare, and now you have Democrats wanting to trash it and do something completely different. So a lot of folks have got to see that get worked out, I think. Maybe the Republican messaging took hold. Um, <laughs> um, uh, on Biden, though, I actually think, so I, I, my suspicion right after the debate was that Kamala would gain more with basically white liberal women mm -hmm. than she would with the African-American community. I think that's starting to bear out. And I think she has actually, Warren had a very good debate and hasn't really seen a bump in the polls. And I think basically Kamala has, Kamala has eaten the bump with white liberal women yep. that Elizabeth Warren would see. On Biden, my own perspective is I don't think it's the issue of busing per se mm -hmm. that is what is potentially damaging to him. What I think is potentially damaging to him is that it put a chink in that armor of the idea that he is the most electable. In a because Democratic no one, primary. Because no one could look at Joe Biden on that stage and say, this is the guy to take on Donald Trump. Uh, I disagree with that uh, because I'm not going to, I've seen Joe before, so I'd be the first to admit the Joe we saw uh, on that debate stage was not the Joe. Cranky, entitled, yeah. right. didn't it, feel like he had, should right. have to and be I there, think, didn't feel like he should have to engage with these people. Exactly. I mean, remember President Obama, his first debate with Mitt Romney was a disaster. disaster. It wasn't this bad. This was worse. Uh, this no, was no, worse. That, I no, that, that was Obama was, bad. that Obama yeah. was, no, that was pretty bad. I mean, because yeah. that was just, that was total arrogance and yes. disdain for the process. Why am I even here talking to you, right. let alone, yeah, I'm well, going to run against you. That's what Biden No, Biden, Biden, I think. He was like a cranky old man out there. I think Biden was just more, um, uh, not prepared uh -huh. for what he was ha what he had to go into. I think Obama just didn't want to be there. There was no indication that Bi oh, Biden didn't want to be there. I think oh, that's a different situation. But having said that, I still think, to your point, there's a lot of validity to the idea of who uh, still can be in a position, the best position to beat Donald Trump. Right now, Donald Trump is winning this his reelection, um, and it's not so much because of the attack on him. But I think he's winning it around these policy issues. They're subtle. They're not necessarily driving the news story. Everyone's getting into the bling of the personalities mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, but I think beneath the surface, and this is why I think Biden still in the, in the main will be the better candidate uh, coming out of this for Democrats. Um, when it gets to that discussion, those policy issues, he's going to be able to better prosecute the case than a Kamala Harris, who seems to be on, on health care alone all over the map. Well, which issues Fair. are you talking about? Which issues is it that the, the voters, I mean, I, I think I know what it is. It's to the economy. I think it's on trade. I think immigration in particular. He's in the wrong place on trade. The president? Biden. Oh, no, no, I'm talking about yeah. the President yeah. Trump, and right. that's that's why I'm curious right. on why you think Joe, because Joe Biden is the opposite on all of this. I also want your view on the immigration question. Almost every candidate on the stage know. either you know expressed uh, willing, I think every candidate expressed willingness to provide health care to illegal immigrants. Several Democrats on the first night said they want to decriminalize Open illegal borders, immigration. Yeah, basically. I mean, that, that seems to me a completely unelectable position. That is, yeah. it, that is something that's going to be right up Trump's alley. He yeah. even, I mean, look, the one thing I admire about Donald Trump mm -hmm. is that he will tell you what he's thinking right. and what he's going to do. And so he's already laying out, I'm coming at you on immigration, mm -hmm. all right? I'm going to come at you on the economy. 
um, and I'm going to come at you on health care, not from the standpoint on health care that I'm going to have a plan, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to be able to. It's a defensive position. It's a defensive yeah. position. Right. And uh, the irony of health care for me is that the Democrats are going to be looking to deconstruct Obamacare, and Trump could be in the unenviable position of defending yeah. Obamacare right. in that context. But I think largely immigration is going to be a key play. Mm -hmm. um, I think the president saw what it was able to do for him in 2016. He led with that coming down the steps. Uh, down those uh, uh, escalators when he announced, and I think he's going to replay that narrative um, because it works for him. Uh, it generally works for him, and and he, in terms of new stuff, uh, I think this is about as new as what we're we're going to get in terms of what we saw this past weekend with uh, Kim Jong Un in North Korea, um, because. Everything else, the economy wise, seems to be going along pretty steadily. Uh, and will there be some bumps? Possibly. Um, maybe first quarter you may see some slowing. We're already seeing some slowing, but it may be a realized mm -hmm. slowing of the economy. But the question is whether or not that really hits hard with those voters. Like trade, I think that's going to be interesting to watch, particularly in the farm belt. Yep. because they're getting killed right now. And um, whether or not Trump is able to get Xi Jinping uh, on, on the same page uh, to sort of at least calm the waters, yeah, that will help. Because those people may not switch to the Democratic Party, but they just may not come out and vote. And right. that's, that's going to be a fascinating piece, because I think that's one of the, the more interesting aspects of this. As much as people have this, have all this uh, you know, vinegar about this election, they want to get out there and do something. I'm just not so sure. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see uh, what the turnout really looks like for both parties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Republicans being somewhat satisfied that he's got this in the hand, uh, and Democrats frustrated because their guy or their gal didn't get the nomination. There's wow. reason to be very cautious about making any predictions. <laughs> Particularly <laughs> in, in day, July. Yeah, right. Indeed. Right. Michael Steele. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you, sir. Great Great to see you. Great Great to have you. Thank you. Next on Rising, debates are over, but how are those moments actually playing out on the campaign trail? Journalist Matt Taibbi weighs in on which candidates may have gotten a bump, which have fallen flat, and he's in Iowa, so he's going to give us a little bit of Iowa perspective as well as Rising continues.